Thanks for listening today. Uh, this is the first ever Bo Rush podcast. You know, I'm Scott Nelson. I'm here with my co-host, Travis Stowe. Travis, how you doing today, bud? I'm doing pretty good. How about you, Scott? Oh, man, you know, I'm, I'm doing good. You know, I'm, I'm doing something I love to do. I'm, I'm following a passion and, you know, I'm, I'm happy to be doing it. Well, you recently moved back from uh, Colorado, haven't you? I have. I actually just made a long journey, uh, 1,500 miles from Colorado back down to Georgia. Steep drive. It was. I, I did it straight through in 21 hours. So I just uh, I wanted to get it over with. I wanted to get back here and and get ready for uh, for deer season as quickly as I could. There's a, there's a lot to be done in a very short amount of time with changing regions. Now, knowing that you're in Colorado and here in Georgia, and you're leaving, how was the weather out there? Because right now, you just came in to where the hottest time for this season. You know what? The, um, I, I thought coming out of the altitude, I'd be fine. Uh, at this point, I'd say give me the altitude back. The, the humidity down here is absolutely dampening. Uh, you know, being on the river, you, you can literally see uh, the humidity in the air. It is completely different circumstances than, than I'm used to, you know, out in Colorado. So it should make for a very interesting big game season. Nice. Is there snow already in Colorado, though? Uh, not at this point, there's not. Uh, it's, that's, that's still probably a month or so out. They'll, they'll, they'll start getting some high country. And it, it'll go from there. With as mild of a, of a summer as it was, I have a feeling it's going to be a, a pretty devastating winter out there. So, you know, <laughs> I wish we'll we get snow, happens. but uh, maybe we'll get it. Maybe we won't. We got some last year, but I don't know if we'll get it this year. <laughs> uh, as I recall, I think that was I think that was ice, not snow. <laughs> Two inches of, of ice for four days is what everyone's been telling me since since I came back. Yeah, well, ice is our snow. <laughs> Definitely. Tell me a little bit about yourself. You know, we, we want to introduce ourselves to to the audience that we're hoping to bring on board here. You know, let's let's go into a little bit of you know who we are, what our background is, and and, and what we really want to accomplish with this new this new podcast, uh, the Bo Rush Podcast. Well, um, who I am is personally, I on a day to day basis, I do a lot of web design. I work from home, and I am very grateful to be able to do that. I'm a new father. I have a son that uh, he's going to be a year old coming soon. And uh, it's definitely brought on some new thoughts of where I want to be in life, what I want to achieve as well as give him and let him experience stuff. But uh, coming down to like my background of outdoors, I've been always passionate about the outdoors. I enjoy it more than being inside if all possible. But when it comes to hunting, um, I I started when I was young. My family personally wasn't into hunting all that much, but I was lucky enough to have a few neighbors that took me under their wing. They showed me the ropes on getting out into the field, learning how to hunt uh, deer mostly. And at that time, it was strictly rifle. I didn't even understand the concept of bows. And when I, even I did see it, I always thought it was nuts. Why would you want to make something harder on yourself? But uh, it, it's took many years for me to come around, especially because of you, obviously. You kind of helped me uh, see the advantage and the enjoyment of bow hunting. But uh, still, as I was growing up, around uh, as I got into 18, 19, 20, I was still wanting to use strictly a, a rifle. I think you came around a few years later, but um, I guess, was it two or three years you and I started hunting? You started bringing in a bow, and I was still hunting with a rifle, and you kept asking and getting me to at least attempt the idea of a bow and it finally convinced me to do it so i, I finally looked around I, I did my research and ever since i pulled the very first bow to full draw i was hooked it's uh it's definitely a thrill pulling a bow back you know i, I don't have any problem with with any type of hunter i don't care if you know you're shooting a, a rifle rimfire if you're muzzle loading you know, if you're shooting a crossbow or if you're shooting traditional or a compound bow, um, I'm, I'm all about the hunting community. And, you know, that's, I, I think that's a big part of, of my stance on the hunting industry is right now, you know, you see a lot of separation between traditionalists and compound guys, between archers and riflemen, between riflemen and crossbow guys. And I, you know, I just, I, I hope at some point, you know, we can we can bridge the gap a little bit because with everything that's going on and all, all the antis that are out there, you know, we've, we've got to stick together, you know, getting this next generation 
you know, as involved as, you know, we were when we, when we were kids, you know, when, when my dad was, was a kid is that's what it was about. It was about hunting. It didn't matter what you were using. You know, you and I have been hunting together for many years and all those years that we did hunt, it seemed like we were going after it, what, two, three, four times a week and well, maybe two to three. I might be exaggerating with the four. Not, but, not by much though. <laughs> true. But, uh, you know, I, I thought it was interesting that when you started hunting with me, uh, I'd like to know you know, what was the reason why you got into hunting in general? You know, so my family, you know, mom's side, dad's side, everyone was always big into hunting. Back in their day, hunting was a necessity. You know, they were all from, from Kansas and Colorado and, and, you know, really they spent their time in the woods to get food on the table. Um, as I was growing up, my dad didn't, do much hunting. I remember a couple of times, you know, rabbit hunting with him um, before my mom became very anti guns and didn't want it in the house. So, you know, I kind of always had that family history and tradition and, you know, seeing the pictures and, and wanted to know what that experience was like. You know, I, I, I loved fishing. I knew that I spent every day I could out on the river or at a lake or trying to find, find something to do outdoors. And I spent a lot of time in the woods. I, I was fortunate enough Throughout high school, you know, there were a couple of guys that I knew that that hunted and, you know, we would we would go out and it would turn into, you know, basically just camping. Um, you know, I started working at, at one job I had and that's where I met you at. Uh, you talked about you were going hunting and I pried a little bit and, and you ended up uh, inviting me, inviting me to go out, which that opened a door for me. Such a pivotal moment for for my swing just in, in, in life in general. You know, at that point, I'd never been able to actually get out and hunt consistently. Could you say that that was also the point when you started losing all your money in the bank account going towards outdoor gear? You know, honestly, no. And and, and the pure reason why is, you know, I, I, I didn't have much money in the first place. Uh, <laughs> so I spent a lot of time, you know, finding bargain deals for camo. And, you know, I wore, I remember, I have a picture from the first time we went hunting. I'm I'm literally in a pair of like green khakis that I had and, and and some boots and I think my jacket is is a jacket that I got for school like the year before it just happened to be green uh, and, and that that's what I wore it's a, I, I I didn't have money to invest really to become you know professional with you know how I went into the woods and camo and I didn't know any of that I had no education on camo patterns on techniques, on, on really what in the world I was doing. And I, I kind of, I, I kind of learned as I go. Um, but that's the whole point though, right? I mean, you think about it when you started off, you just used what you had. And as you progressed, you started buying things that made more sense to you. And, but you jumped in, you didn't have to feel like I have to have everything before I could even go out. You just started with what you had and improved over time. Yeah, I mean, I'd spent so much time in the woods up to that point, just in my normal clothes. And, you know, I, I'd seen deer, you know, I was out just hiking or, you know, I got to points when I would try, I, I was almost mock hunting, not not knowing it. You know, I was learning, trying to see how animals acted in the woods. And, and, um, and, and that's kind of what progressed me to getting over to a bow was, you know, I didn't have money to to dump into a, a new rifle or even, even a used one. But I, I had a bow that my dad's had since like 1985. It was n nothing fancy at all. It was literally a 1985 Horton bow, um, which I don't even know if they still make those. I don't know, but it was slow. It arced uh, for me to take a shot at deer was incredibly stupid. I didn't see very many deer for my first couple years. So it's okay. But it, I think that lends to my patience with hunting many more times in a tree stand all day long, sitting there as still as possible and not seeing a deer. And <laughs> I, I remember all the times we would go hunting. You'd always sit in a spot that I was going to go sit or vice versa. And every time I'd sit in the other spot, I'd see deer and either shoot one or two. And we had to come up carrying my deer out and you'd always sit in the wrong one. <laughs> Which, looking back, I, I'm, I'm thrilled about that, to be honest. You know, there's there's a lot of guys I know that, you know, they went out one, two, or three times, didn't see anything, and gave up. True. You know, they, they, they didn't have success or what their view of success was. They didn't have the trophy picture at the, at the end of the day to take. But, you know, me spending so much time 
outdoors, not seeing deer, let me really focus on everything else that was happening in the woods. I mean, and, and, and there's so much that happens in the woods and it just kind of lets you relax. It's honestly one of the most relaxing things I I would choose to do is to just go out and, and sit in a tree stand. Well, I agree with you. I remember those days we'd get out there early morning right before the sun came out. You'd hear the geese uh, fly over you or sometimes fly. We were near a little tiny, it was a pond or a little river. I can't remember what it was. But you river. river, okay, and you would see them sometimes fly right in. But the weather was right at the point where you'd see the uh, the fog slowly come up. So you're seeing them glide right into the water. You see the fog coming out. It was just an incredible experience. That right there, to me, is like zen. Being out there, seeing stuff like that, hearing the nature, getting away from technology. Uh, that really is what gets me. And then obviously having the opportunity to hunt game is great. Harvesting something is even amazing, but that's not the only point. No, no. I mean, there's, there's a lot more to hunting than loosing an arrow or pulling a trigger. There, there's, the off season to me is one of the funnest times. Just honestly, in the South, that is where you do 90% of your work. I mean, 10% is making some adjustments during season, but if you don't do your work and know your specific animal that you're trying to harvest, you're, you're going to mess up. You're going to spook him. He's going to know you're there and, and season's over because it's so heavily pressured. They turn nocturnal very, very quickly. Yeah. Getting to the reasoning why we're even starting the podcast. Uh, I am one of those fanaticals that go out and watch YouTube videos. I start listening to audios. I read articles. I try to find out as much information before I make a purchase, try to make sure I, I don't make a mistake. And uh, I end up listening to the uh, the podcast that were out at that time. It's about five, almost six years ago. And I felt that I learned so much, especially about what type of gear to use, um, how to like the techniques on how to keep your form properly when buying a bow, where to go, things like that. And it was so helpful for me that uh, I just felt that this should still keep going on. And there are other podcasts out there. I just don't think now there's one specifically tailored to bow hunters. And I think being that everybody these days want to always watch videos, 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 which is great. But sometimes you don't have the time to sit there and watch something. You need to go and do stuff or you need to be driving down the road and you just want to listen. Um, and podcasts, to me, they serve that purpose. And I think because of all the help that it helped me get into bow hunting, I think with bringing back some sort of podcast that will provide information, give people tips and tactics, listening to other people's stories, it might give someone else another chance to learn the passion of bow hunting like it did for me. How about you? Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, education um, and, and learning is something that continually keeps going on and on and on when you when it comes to archery. I mean, there's every year there's 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 some new technology, something new that comes out and, and you learn how to use that or incorporate that into what you're already doing. And, and so I've been very, very fortunate enough to be able to sit down and, and talk with some of the top ranked archers in the U S and, you know, some of the best, the game callers, you know, the guys that can sit here and win any bugle competition any day of the week, just sitting on their couch because they spend that much time doing it. You know, I, I, I deal with camo experts and, and, and when I say that people joke, but there is so much more that goes into camo than just looking at a pattern and, you know, trying to match what you're around there. There's, Depth perception is one thing that people don't realize and don't look at. There are total, complete theories on what animals actually see and what affects their vision that some guys I, I, I've been able to sit down with have explained to me and, and shown me, you know, the proof and in, in the background. And so all of these guys are guys that, that I want to be able to bring on here and, and really help educate and, and show, you know, the, the in-depth side of, of archery and, we just want to be able to bring them to the listeners, to you guys that are listening right now uh, and answer questions that, you know, you've had or you thought or theories that you've been thinking about with hunting and how it affects your hunts and your stocks 
and, and even in your off season, you know, what you can do to become a better archer. What I like about what you said is it, it, it also lets, uh, hopefully our viewers know is that having this podcast, we now have the opportunity to reach out to these people and listen and learn from the best. Well, while we're learning, it's going to improve our skills. And then on top of that, the people that follow and listen with us, they get to learn just as much. And I think that's the greatest part about this. We don't have to be the experts. We get to find the people that are experts. And uh, in the end, it's a, a win-win. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, no one can be an expert at every aspect of hunting. I'm, I'm in no way an expert at all. I, I scrape by. I, I do well. And, you know, I, I've tried to learn this knowledge because I, I've wanted to get better. I want to progress. I, I want to learn more and more and more. So these guys are the ones that I've been able to learn from. So I want to bring them on give and give our listeners, you know, that first person view, you know, from, from the horse's mouth is the saying we always use how they hunt or why they hunt and, and, and take your own opinion. I mean, so much of hunting is listening to someone, hearing what they have to say, hearing their opinion and adjusting their approach or their technique to what works for you, what you feel comfortable with. Hunting is, is a style and, and you've got to have your own style. You've got to be comfortable with how you hunt. I like what you said that, uh, that you can't know everything. You can't be the expert of everything. That reminded me of a quote I heard at one time. And it was about, if you're excelling at one thing, you are going to be failing at another because it's just not, you don't have enough time. If, if your knowledge is a mile wide, it's only an inch deep. So Ooh, that's a good one. <laughs> I was trying, I was trying to think which one I, I, I've heard that one before. Um, but yeah, you know what it comes down to it. We just want to provide a, a podcast, something that, you know, you guys can listen to, you know, when you're driving to work or when you're when you're driving out to to deer camp or you're driving out to one of your hunts that, you know, it, it provides you guys some knowledge or some answers for things that you've been trying to Google or, you know, you've been asking your buddies about. It's just another viewpoint. Well, I, I do think that we've gotten a pretty good explanation of what we're doing for this podcast and i do want to let know the followers that after every podcast please by all means always go and check our site at mybowrush.com forward slash the podcast series that we're on which this one will be 001 but you'll be able to listen to it directly on the site you'll be able to see the show notes but as well as if you have a question or something you'd like to learn that we haven't actually covered yet please let us know or even if you have a really good story or skill set that you've learned that you'd like to share, let us know that too, because if it fits something that we're trying to talk about, we'll bring you on. We're not going to only look for the people that are on TV or the, the celebrities. We're going for the people that know the knowledge. And so if you feel you have something you want to share, let us know because we'd love to have you on the show. Oh, absolutely. And ask whatever questions you want and realize you're, you're, you're not asking us, like you're asking us to find the answer for you. Like I, I, I don't know everything by far. Travis, he knows quite a lot. He doesn't know everything, but we're going to find the guys that know the answers and, and get them to you guys. So, you know, thank you so much for joining us. Remember uh, that this podcast series is, is zero zero one. Um, and we look forward to hearing from you guys some more. I'm Travis Doe. I'm Scott Nelson. Thanks for joining the Bow Rush podcast. <laughs>